All right, how's it going, y'all? So it is early February, 2023, and Synology has really kind of finally finished unveiling, at least I believe, all of their 2023 models, at least the, for a long time, that really home users will be expecting and businesses, smaller businesses, will be able to use and have value. There's a couple things that may get added in here, but I think now they just unveiled the DS223, and so I think that there is a good time to make a video on what Synology should you buy in 2023? Because a lot of people ask this question and it's gotten a lot more complicated than the last time I made this video. So we're gonna start off this video and really just kind of go through the bottom tier up to the top on the units that I would really stand out for probably 95% of users. I'm not gonna go into the really, really, really powerful crazy stuff, but I'm gonna focus on things that are reasonable going up to the rack mounted units, the very basic rack mounted units. All right, so really quickly, I think the majority of people buying a Synology have really one constraint that I would say, probably don't, it's not worth it to buy a Synology unless you're gonna get one with this, and that is make sure the unit you're buying has a BTRFS. That's a huge one. And so all the units I'm gonna talk about today have BTRFS, and then one thing that is not included in all the models is also active backup for business. So if you're looking to back up your Windows PC, servers, a bunch of stuff like that, make sure to get one with active backup for business, but that's gonna be all the plus models. So I wanted to get those two things out of the way here. And now I want to talk about basically what NAS you should buy at all these different price points and essentially kind of go up the ladder. So I think the really good starting place for people is going to be the DS223. This unit has BTRFS, is only $250, and I think that makes it a really good price point, and it is a good input into the market. It's got a decent CPU, it's ARM, but in all reality, that CPU probably is not gonna slow you down. If you're just looking for a basic home or office file server, I think the DS223 is going to be a solid entry point into the market for a lot of people and probably would be the NAS I buy first before buying anything else. Assuming you do not have other constraints, this unit cannot do active backup for business. So if you want active backup for business, the ability to back up laptops, everything like that to the NAS, you cannot do that on this unit. You can back up Macs with a time machine and that's pretty much it. But everything else will be there. All the other features pretty much will be there other than virtual machines and Docker, but don't worry about that stuff for the vast majority of users. You probably do not care too much about that. I think it's a good entry point to the market for people who just need a simple office file server and just need to get started. The next step up is a big question between the DS723 Plus and the DS923 Plus. They're essentially identical units with a difference between having two bays or four bays built in. So the price point difference here is the DS723 Plus is $450 and the DS923 Plus is $600. So it's a $150 price increase to get twice as many bays. That cost difference very quickly can be made up for if you're planning on using RAID. So the only reason I would buy the DS723 Plus is if you know you do not need that much space. If you are somebody who only has a terabyte of files and you know it's not gonna increase that much, buy two eight terabyte drives, they're often on sale for a pretty good price, stick them in there and you know this is gonna be very future proof. I probably would not bother adding the NVMe caching on there. If you are looking to get a more powerful unit, I'd go to the 923 Plus because you are going to get four bays then, which is going to have a lot more overall throughput to your device. And it makes that 10 gigabit card a little bit more interesting. Both these units can support the new proprietary Synology 10 gigabit card. It's that guy right there. It slots in very easily, but it's not cheap. But the nice thing is you've got the upgrade path there that you can buy this unit. And if you do go to a 10 gig network at some point, you can buy the adding card without having to replace the NAS. So there is that advantage. So this price point right here between the 723 plus, the 923 plus, the 1522 plus, and the 1621 plus is a hard place to figure out where you are. Any one of these units is going to be solid. The most powerful CPU of all of these is actually going to be the 1621 plus and the 1821 plus. The 1621 plus and the 1821 plus are essentially identical units. Just one of them has an extra two bays in there. Then the 1522 plus is essentially the 923 plus with an extra bay and an extra four gigs of RAM. So this entire price point right here is basically every time you go up, it costs an extra 100 to 150 dollars. 
And because of that, it makes it very difficult to figure out where a really good place is. I think the 923 plus is a great place to be unless you think you're going to need more RAM. If you ever think you're gonna need more RAM, which most people do not need to upgrade the RAM in their Synology, but if you're planning on it, go straight to the 1522 plus. You get an extra bay for an extra $100 and an extra four gigs of RAM. Definitely go straight to the 1522 plus. They're the exact same unit, except for the fact that the 1522 plus cannot use the SSDs, even if they're Synology NVMe SSDs, as their own volume. You can use SATA SSDs, but you cannot use the Synology SSDs. Very confusing there. That's actually this unit right here. So if you do plan on buying the 923 plus, upgrade the RAM, go straight to the 1522 plus. Well worth it there. Then if you do need a more powerful unit, the 1621 plus and the 1821 plus are the most powerful desktop units that I often recommend to clients. These things, those CPUs rip through the vast majority of things. They're capable of multiple gigabytes per second of upload and download speeds under a 10 gigabit network. You can actually reasonably fill those things with SSDs and get the performance of SSDs out of them. They rip through stuff. These are great office file servers and really, really powerful. I would definitely recommend them. They're great units. A lot of people think because they're a 21 model, they're less powerful. No, these are by far the most powerful desktop units that I recommend. I really like them. And all the units I've mentioned so far do not have restrictions on the drives you can put in them. So one thing you know about Synology is any Synology that's got more than eight bays, so nine bays or greater, is essentially required to use Synology hard drives. They're a lot more expensive than regular hard drives and they do have some advantages, but for the most part, it is an unnecessary expense for most small businesses because you probably do not need that level of space. So I very rarely tick up to the 2422 plus because of that, because there's a very large cost increase to that. The rest of the units that I've mentioned so far, you can stick any hard drive in there and if it's not on the compatibility list, it'll throw a quick warning, but that is not a big deal. These units, the nine bays or greater, will give you warnings and it will be a lot worse. And it will look like there's something wrong with the volume because you use non-Synology hard drives, even though there's not. So I tend to stay away from the 2422 plus if I can get away with an 1821 plus, if at all possible. The other thing to really think about when you're doing this is don't buy the storage you need today, buy the storage you think you're gonna need in the next five years. And that does not mean you have to fill up the drives to the start. Often what I'll have clients do who are looking to save some money is buy a NAS and fill half the hard drive bays to get the space they need. Then as they need more space, they can buy more hard drives, slot more hard drives in, one click, expand the volume, and that's it. So that's definitely an option there. Buying a larger unit and not using all the hard drives to start is a great way to get a lot more life out of these NASes because the primary reason why you're going to want to upgrade to a new NAS is you start running low on space because as you have the space, you see adding more and more files. All right, so that's kind of the overview of the desktop units. It's hard to go really wrong with any of them. If you're looking for the utmost power for something I would recommend, the 1621 Plus and the 1821 Plus are what I recommend a lot. There is the 1621 XS Plus, which does have a more powerful CPU, but for the majority of people, you do not need that unit. It is that extra power is kind of unnecessary and does not get you that much bang for your buck, in my opinion. It becomes a lot more expensive, though it does have 10 gigabit ports. Another thing to know, these three units right here have 10 gigabit capability using that proprietary add-in card, which is about $160 for a single 10 gigabit port, whereas the 16 and the 1821 plus both take standard PCIe cards. So you can add in SFP plus cards, 25 gigabit SFP plus cards, or RJ45 cards. So they are a lot more flexible with 10 gig upgradability. All right, so now I'm going to skip ahead to rack mounted ones. And we're really only gonna talk about one because it's, it's kind of the, the golden one for what I recommend for people. The vast majority of businesses who I recommend a rack mounted server to is going to be the RS-1221 Plus. Note, you almost certainly do not want the RS-1221 RP Plus. 
The RP stands for redundant power supply. Unless you actually have the ability to use redundant power supplies, as in two different UPSs off two different power sources, how have you got that? It's probably not worth it to buy the RP Plus. It's a good amount more expensive, but more importantly, it is a lot louder. It is significantly louder than the RS1221 Plus. The RS1221 Plus is nearly silent. It's a phenomenal unit, really great. It is essentially an 1821 Plus without the NVMe SSDs in a rack mountable format. Great unit, really lightweight, and it's a really short depth, which is very nice. This is a great unit that really recommend the majority of businesses go to who are looking for a rack mounted solution because it's quiet, powerful, and a short depth, which is all great points. And then from there, you can start upgrading, but they're all going to be a lot louder. And that is something that a lot of people are ready for. And so really the 1221 plus is probably the golden goose of the rack mounted units and is probably going to be my upgrade. Maybe whenever the 24 unit comes out, I might go ahead and buy that just because I love that unit so much. It's so easy to deploy and just, it goes anywhere. Really like that unit. All right, so I know this was a quick video, but I've had a lot of people ask me these questions in the comments below. So I figured I'd make a video addressing them. Go and leave any other questions you got for me in the comments below. And I will leave affiliate links to all these things down in the description below as well. So check those out and sports channel, all that good stuff. All right, if you wanna hire me for a project, I've got a link for that in the description as well. What else can I say? All right, that's it. Have a good one, bye.